Exterior, deep space, night, a field of stars. Narrator, most of the stars in the universe have companion stars. Our sun is one of them. A yellow-brown object appears as a tiny dot in the distance and grows in size until it fills the screen. Super, 2026 AD. Interior, board offices, day. On a mahogany door, a brass plate. Phil Harrison, chairman. Interior, executive office, day. An office the size of a small apartment, furnished with antiques and high tech. Phil Harrison, 49, stands looking out a large window onto a devastated landscape. Phil is tall, blonde, blue-eyed and fit. He wears business casual clothes. A woman, 20s, comes in. Woman, Phil, your granddaughter is here. A two-year-old girl runs over to him. Phil picks her up and they both look out the window. Phil, someday we'll be able to live out there again. Shall I tell you a story about how it used to be? Little girl, yes, Grandpa, tell me a story. Super, 2014 AD. Interior, Dan's bedroom, day. Dan Harrison, 12, blonde, blue-eyed, slightly built, works on a pencil drawing, a knock on the door. Dan, come in. Maxine Harrison, 36, comes in and looks over his shoulder. His drawing shows two suns in the sky, meteors falling, damaged buildings, a screaming woman. Maxine, what's that? Dan, it's just a picture. Interior, Maxine's office, day. Maxine is in session with a 50-year-old male wearing an expensive suit. Client, I keep having that dream. Maxine, what dream is that? Client, the dream about two sons that caused terrible disasters. Maxine, what does that mean to you? Client, I don't know. Interior, upscale law office, day. Phil Harrison, 37, meets another lawyer to discuss a case. Phil is dressed in jeans and a Hawaiian shirt. The other guy wears a shirt and tie. Attorney, my client has agreed to pay 40000 in back wages to the busboys and dishwashers. Is that acceptable? Phil, you must be joking. Attorney, it's the best they can do. Phil, I have a friend at immigration. Attorney, 100000 Phil, done. Interior, Phil's office, day. An older building with a view of downtown high-rise apartments. Phil's Stanford diploma hangs on the wall. Cast-off furnishings. Piles of files on chairs and desk. Phil studies a brief. Interior, windowless room, day. Ed Harrison, 64, a representative of Atlantis Trading, meets with the president. Ed is tall, blonde, blue-eyed, fit and tanned. He wears a dark blue knit shirt with the Winged Sun logo. A large screen shows a map of the solar system with planets in their orbits and shows an extra object with an eccentric orbit. Ed, Mr. President, our astronomers tell us that the period of high activity will start in about three months. President, we appreciate your concern, Ed, but my people tell me it's nothing to worry about. We'll be just fine. Ed, sometimes we feel like we're wasting our time talking to you. The President leaves. Interior, President's limo, day. The President speaks on his cell phone. President, what's the progress on my bunker? They tell me we have three months. Interior, restaurant, day. Maxine and Ellen Jason, 38, meet for lunch. Ellen is a robust but feminine woman. When they hug, Ellen reaches down and pulls Maxine in until their bellies are pressed tightly together. They sit down and start to talk. Interior, Phil and Maxine's home, day. Phil's parents come for Sunday lunch with Phil's family. Carol Harrison, 64, is tall, blonde, blue-eyed, well turned out. After lunch, the women clean up and Phil and Ed adjourn to Phil's shop area in the garage. Ed takes note of Phil's prepping. Ed, you're going in the right direction here, but it's not quite enough. Phil, I think I've got the most likely situations covered. Ed, what if the situation goes beyond that point? Phil, not likely. Ed, not likely, but possible. Phil, I have a life to live. I'm not one of those crazies who expects the end of the world. Ed, I just don't understand why you won't let me help you. Phil, 
Dad, I don't want a cushy job with one of your friends. Ed, it wouldn't be cushy. They'd work your ass off. Phil, it would still be something you arranged. Ed, no one makes it alone. Phil, I want success on my own terms. Ed, suit yourself. Phil, I will. Interior, radio studio, night. Show theme plays. Jack Prisman, 55, introduces a guest. Nikki Tesla, 36. Nikki wears a dark blue knit shirt with the Winged Sun logo. He's tall, blonde, and blue-eyed. Prussman, tonight we have a very special guest who claims to be from Atlantis, Nikki Tesla. Nikki, how are you? Nikki, just fine, Jack, and you? Prussman, fine. So you said you wanted to get right to the point tonight and fill in the background later. Is that right? Nikki, yes, it is. Interior, basement, night. Five-gallon buckets of stored food, water storage containers, guns on the wall, custom AR-15, tactical shotgun, Glock 9 with laser sight, communications gear. A guy dressed in camo is reloading two twenty three ammo as he listens. Pressman, VO. Listeners, you can go to the website to see the pictures he's uploaded. Nikki, what is your point? Nikki, voiceover. The Earth is about to suffer a lot of damage. Your listeners need to prepare. Pressman, voiceover. And a lot of them already are. Can you tell us what's going to happen? Interior, Senator's Office, Night. A senator and his chief of staff are pouring drinks from a bottle of scotch while listening to the show. They have a diagram of the solar system up on the monitor. It shows the normal planet orbits in one very eccentric orbit, the orbit of the twin star. Nikki, voiceover. Certainly, there are going to be earthquakes, volcanoes, and meteor showers like we haven't seen for a long time. Pressman, voiceover. And that will be caused by... Nikki voiceover. The sun has a companion star that passes close by every 4,000 years. Interior truck cab, night. The truck pulls up to a gate in the desert with the radio tuned to after hours. The gate swings open. The truck drives up to a door that has a winged sun logo painted on it. The door says, Atlantis Trading Company. Pressman voiceover. Well, we talked to Zachariah Sitchin about the 12th planet for a long time. Is this the same thing? Nikki, voiceover. Sitchin was half right, a large body in a long orbit, far away for most of the time. Remember, he was working from a dead language. It's not too surprising that he had some difficulties with translation. Pressman, voiceover. I suppose not. And what can we really do about this? Nikki, voiceover. Dig. Dig deep. Dig fast. Interior, Phil's home office, evening. Phil sits in the big leather chair of his wall-appointed home office watching a YouTube video. On the computer screen, a video called Sane Prepping. Man on Video A lot of my friends think I'm crazy, and maybe I am, but when the shit hits the fan, I'll be ready. Phil pauses the video and calls his parents' number. No answer. He leaves a message. Phil, hey mom, dad, just checking in to see you're all right. Maxine comes in, looks over his shoulder. Maxine, you know you're more like your father than you realize. Phil, I don't think so. Maxine, he's into all this survival stuff too. Phil, do you think I'm crazy? Maxine, not really. Interior, Maxine and Phil's home, evening. Phil and Maxine fix supper. Phil, was there a message from my parents? Maxine, no. Phil, I think I need to call him again. Phil picks up the kitchen phone and dials a number. The other phone rings, but no one answers. When the voicemail announcement comes on, he hangs up without leaving a message. Dan comes in. Phil, they didn't mention any plans to go out of town. I think I need to go over there after supper. Maxine, they're probably okay. Phil, I'm sure they are, but I need to check. Dan, can I go with you? Phil, sure. Exterior, Phil's parents' town home, evening. Phil pulls into the driveway. There are no lights on inside or out. Phil opens the door and goes in. Interior, Phil's parents' town home, evening. Phil walks through the living room, into the kitchen area, turning on lights as he goes. Nothing unusual. Phil goes to the master bedroom, then the master bath. No signs of forced entry or foul play. Interior, Ed's home office, night. Dan wanders around looking at things. 
He turns on the computer monitor, and the screen fills with strange characters. He rests his hand on a notebook lying on the desk, then opens it and flips through the pages. He takes it to his dad. Dan, Dad, look at this. Phil reads the address. Phil, so? Dan, maybe they went there. Interior, Phil's car, evening. Phil and Dan drive slowly by the address. Above the door, the winged sun logo. The door says, Atlantis Trading Company. Phil, interesting. Exterior, Atlantis Trading, evening. Phil and Dan approach the door. Phil presses a button. A man's voice comes from an intercom. Guard, voice over. We're closed. Phil, I'm just trying to find out what this place is. Guard, read the sign. Phil, my parents are missing and I found this address at their house. Guard, come back tomorrow. Phil, does the name Ed Harrison mean anything to you? Guard, who are you? Phil, I'm Phil Harrison, Ed's son. Guard, wait. Phil and Dan look at each other. After a pause, the electronic lock snicks open. Phil pulls the door partway open and sticks his head in. A man sits at a small desk at the end of the hall. He's wearing a dark blue knit shirt with the winged sun logo. They go in. Near the entry, he notices grooves in the floor and sees the edge of a thick sliding door. He touches the door. Interior, Atlantis Trading, evening. Phil and Dan walk to the guard desk. The guard is an overweight Vietnam vet, 67. His skin is blotched from decades of heavy drinking. The thousand-yard stare still burns in his roomy eyes. Phil, obviously my name means something to you. The guard doesn't respond. Phil, hey, listen, you let me in after you heard my name, so you must know something. Why are you messing with me? Guard, why don't you leave us your phone number and we'll get back to you? Phil, that's not good enough. Guard, it's all I can do. The guard puts his hand in his gun. Phil scowls at the man. The guard passes him a paper and pen. Phil writes down his name and cell number. Phil, call me. The guard stands up. Guard, good night. Phil pauses, then turns away. He and Dan go down the hall and out the door. Exterior, Atlantis trading, evening. Phil and Dan pause before leaving. Phil kicks a small stone. Phil, bunch of bullshit. Guard, voiceover. I heard that. They walk away. Interior, Dan's bedroom, night. Dan lies in bed watching a video on his pad. On the screen, a video called Elite Bunkers. Narrator, all over the world there are ancient man-made tunnels, underground cities, and bunker systems. Today, people with money are digging deep bunkers because they fear cataclysmic disasters. Interior, Phil and Maxine's bedroom, night. Phil and Maxine are in bed discussing the evening's events. Phil, Dan thinks we're going in the right direction on this. Maxine, his hunches are usually pretty good. Phil, we'll see if they call tomorrow. If not, we have to go to the police. Phil rolls up on his elbow and gives her a goodnight kiss. Interior, school lunchroom, day. Dan is sitting at a table with Katie Wilson, 12. Katie is a nerdy, tomboy sort of girl. Katie, doesn't that seem creepy to you? Dan has his mouth full. <laughs> Katie, your grandpa must be really weird. Dan, that's what my dad says. He thinks grandpa is a bad influence on me. Interior, Phil's law office, day. Phil sits at his computer researching a case. The phone rings. Ed, voice over. How you doing, kiddo? Phil, I'm doing fine, Dad. Where the heck are you? Ed, V.O. I can't really explain that right now. Are you busy this weekend? Phil, not particularly. Ed, voice over. Okay, I want all of you to pack an overnight bag and go back to that place you visited. Be there at 9 on Saturday morning. Can you do that? Still have the address? Phil, yeah, I guess so. Why are you being so mysterious? Did you tell that guard to jerk me around? Ed, V.O., I wanted you to be motivated. We'll explain everything when you get here. Phil, who's we? Ed, V.O., see you Saturday? Phil, yeah, yeah, jeez. Phil hangs up.